friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm doing a video that I have been pretty excited about because I have fallen in love with being a plant parent. As you can see, about a year and a half ago, I pretty much only had maybe one or two plants and then I lived on my own and I was gonna get a pet, but I didn't and I haven't and in the future I will. But for now, I ended up just becoming a plant parent and once I'd had one or two, it wasn't enough. So I ended up buying one more here, another here, and then I'll find one that looked really interesting. And I've ended up with quite a lot of plants. So I thought I would give you a tour, a tour of my plant collection. I'm really excited because I get a lot of joy from these. So if you like plants and you want to see which ones I've got, what they're called, where they're from, keep on watching and hey if you are brand new here don't forget to click that subscribe button and let's just dive straight on into it I'm gonna start with my biggest plant first oh, okay <laughs> This is my Monstera Deliciosa, otherwise known as a Swiss cheese plant. I bought this from Patch Plants about a year ago. I always knew that I wanted one of these. I remember growing up in my family home, we had a massive one of these, and I'm really sad that my mum got rid of it when we moved house. I bought this and it was quite a small plant with only a handful of leaves about a year ago. And as you can see, Oh, <laughs> it's given me quite a lot of leaves. There's even more at the top. Now, my favorite part of this plant is obviously those kind of holes you get in the leaves. And there is actually a reason for those. So these are native to Central America and they're normally found in like shady spots of the jungle. And this allows light to get to the lower leaves, making the plant be able to grow bigger and healthier and stronger. And I just love it. In fact, he's got, <laughs> I mean, you can see here, is actually giving me a brand new leaf and when a plant gifts you a new leaf it's one of the satisfying things about being a plant parent he has recently been repotted he's called Chaz and uh, I did gift him a moss pole for support the physical kind not the emotional kind <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to say, I am so excited to have this plant for years to come because they really can grow enormous, like bigger than you think that they can grow. If you keep repotting them, they can take over a room, put it that way. But yes, I've started off with my pride and joy. Next up, we have this beauty. This is my Chef Lyra plant, otherwise known as the umbrella plant, which you can probably tell why it's called that from the shape of its leaves. They're like tiny little umbrellas. There's a lot of new growth on this at the moment. The top ones up here, they're all new. I'm very, very happy and excited that it's given me new baby. New baby leaves, it's that time of year, isn't it? It's spring when they always give you new leaves. So this is actually a pretty popular houseplant, mainly because it really enjoys the household temperatures. And it was definitely one of my earlier plants, which I bought. And this plant's native to Taiwan. And I just really like it. I have actually tried to propagate this before and failed, but I think I might give it another whirl. Next is my Chinese money plant. You may have seen these online quite a lot. I I believe they became pretty popular over the last few years. I've seen them everywhere. I've seen them on Instagram, but yes, it's the Chinese money plant, otherwise known as the pancake plant, the UFO plant, the friendship plant, and the pass it on plant. The reason it's called the pass it on plant is that this is extremely easy to propagate and it also gifts you babies. I have actually got a baby. This is my teeny tiny Chinese money plant. It's the babiest thing ever. And this started really tiny in the base of the pot. It just appeared one day and I was like, I'm having you in a new pot. So now I've got two plants for the price of one. There's actually three Chinese money plants in this pot and I do need to replant them. But yes, when this has babies or if you propagate it, you can then pass it on to a friend or a family member. Uh, sadly, this plant has almost completely disappeared from its natural habitat, even though it's really, really popular as a house plant and they're really easy to get hold of, which is a shame, but I just think it's such a cool plant. It looks really unique and I love it, but yes, I am definitely gonna repot it, but how fun, round leaves. Okay, this plant here, it's one of my favorites and I know it may not look like the most exciting plant, 
but let me tell you why it's my favorite. Firstly, it's called, I'm gonna have to read this, a Della Sperma Enchinatum, otherwise known as a pickle plant because of its little tiny, it's a succulent, and they kind of look like little green pickles. <laughs> now, when I first saw this, I was in a garden center with my other half, and they came up to me and said, touch this plant. And I was like, I'm not touching that. Look how spiky it looks, because it looks, it looks really sharp. Anyway, I promise you it isn't sharp. It's actually really soft. It almost feels a little bit like silicon which is really weird but i absolutely adore it so yes if you ever see these plants i definitely recommend them i think it's really sweet for a little succulent it looks really striking and this is native to south africa next is a plant that if you are subscribed to me already you're probably going to be a fan of because it kind of looks like a mandrake from harry potter and i do actually have a little sign in here which says mandrake sprouts <laughs> i bought this from ikea many moons ago. This isn't my first one. I did kill one of these when I used to keep plants in my bedroom. This is why I only have plants in my kitchen because I can't kill them in here because I'm always seeing them. But yes, Ikea always sell them and I just, I look at them, I'm just like, that is a mandrake. <laughs> I just love it. It's a tiny little bonsai and it's really, really cute. And I just love it. Look at it. It's got so much character. And the ficus ginseng is native to Southeast Africa. My little mandrake. I'll pop you back. Next up is one of my newest plants. This has been on my wish list for a very, very long time. And some of you may have seen this in a fairly recent vlog, because when I bought this, it was incredibly tangled and knotted. Uh, the garden center that I bought it for, from, sorry, um, lift, like basically took it all and kind of piled it all into the pot. So it was really, really, it wasn't very happy when I bought it, so I, I spent a lot of time detangling. But yes, this is a string of hearts. It gets its name from the shape of its leaves, which I will try to show you. They're tiny little heart-shaped leaves. They're very delicate and they will grow so long. You can put this as high as you like and it will keep on growing, which I think is one of my favorite things about it. I don't think it's gonna have a permanent place in here because it's not high enough and it's already reaching the floor. So I'm probably gonna have to find a bookcase to pop this plant on, but it's absolutely beautiful. And you can get ones that almost have a sort of pink tinge to their leaves. My one doesn't, but either way, I'm very happy. And since bringing it home and it being springtime, I am already seeing some new growth in places, especially at the bottom as well. So yeah, this is a string of hearts and it's a trailing house plant and it's native to South Africa. I've only been a plant mom to this plant for approximately a week, maybe a week and a half. This is an Oxalis triangularis. <laughs> otherwise known as a false shamrock. This is a pretty rare plant. I was actually recommended this. I saw it on one of my friend's Instagram stories. Hello, Sam, if you're watching. And I fell in love with it. I loved the shape of its leaves. I loved the dark purple. It almost reminded me of like gothic butterflies and I thought it was stunning. Also, this flowers a couple of times a year. So you wouldn't always see it with flowers. But interestingly, something that I recently learned was the flower flowers on this plant are edible, even though the plant is toxic to pets. So one of my favorite things about this plant is that it's a pretty emotional and expressive plant. So you will know if it's unhappy or not. I already know that. Um, but also at nighttime, these little kind of butterfly triangular leaves will go to bed. They will close and then come the morning, they will wake up and say good morning and they will open up again. So yeah, I just think it's so cool. I've never seen or owned a plant like it and I'm really pleased with it. The Oxalis is native to South America, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at it. <laughs> it looks almost otherworldly. Right, let me put you back. Ow. Yes, I did just get pricked by a cactus. This plant here, I bought at the same time as my Oxalis. And oh my God, that striking pink. 
I'm not gonna be able to pronounce this without reading it, so hold on. This is a Calathea Stromanthe tri Trio Star. <laughs> I tell you, plant names are so extra. But either way, this is beautiful. So on the top, it will kind of look like a normal green plant, like a normal house plant. But if you look at the underside of its leaves, you can see how hot pink they are. And this is what kind of drew me to this plant by how vibrant and stunning, like it's so striking. It's just a really striking plant. And ugh, can we just talk about this plant pot that I bought for it as well? It's really, really nice. So this particular plant is native to the jungles of the Amazon rainforest in South America, if I remember correctly. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm really pleased because it's already, that is a new leaf. Like, oh, it's just beautiful. I have heard that these can be pretty fussy to look after and I'm hoping I'm going to do it proud and be a good plant mom but so if any of you guys have one of these <laughs> please do leave some care tips down below because I am new to this particular plant and I do have a few doubts <laughs> about if I'm going to be able to keep it alive even though everything else is fine but yes very pretty very pink this one is probably one of the first plants I ever bought in this house, back when I had housemates. This is a trailing jade, and oh my goodness, it's gone absolutely berserk. I have successfully propagated this. It's a really beautiful trailing plant. I love that it hangs off the cabinet here, and <laughs> it, it's the plant that I do keep a little Ford Anglia model in. Probably not the kindest to the plant, but um, it's happy. It's been in there for years, so I don't mind too much. But yes, about a year ago, one of these fell off, and I was really sad it was a really nice, healthy looking, length of plant of the trailing jade and I popped the ant in water and it did root it ma I made a root system I felt like such a powerful person it's always fun when a propagation is successful and then I planted it so now my mom has one of these and it's growing absolutely beautifully in her office so I'm very happy about that but it's a really luscious green these do not like direct sunlight I did learn that the hard way when I first got it because I wasn't I wasn't a, I wasn't a very um experienced or seasoned plant parent back then and all of the leaves turned yellow but since then I've learned how to care for it and it's luscious and green and it's very happy I'm very happy I adore it so much and the trailing jade plant is native to South American rainforests so it does enjoy a little bit of a mist and some humidity most of my plants here do enjoy a mist I've I go around misting them all. The next plant has a little bit of a tail. This is a plant that I bought for my dearest father. I bought him and it was a tiny little plant and it was in this cute plant pot. I mainly bought it for the plant pot from Marks and Spencers. It was this little cat, Colin the caterpillar and it was really, really sweet. Anyway, he liked the pot but didn't want to care for the plants and I went to my parents' house. I was like, what have you done to that gorgeous little plant? So I took it back. <laughs> this is probably the only time I've ever taken a gift back. But I took it back, I repotted it and oh, it's gifted me nine new leaves since moving back in with me. So it's very, very happy. I should probably tell you what this is called. So this plant is actually related to the Monstera deliciosa. You can probably tell by the holes in the leaves. It's like a miniature version. This is actually occasionally referred to as the mini Swiss cheese plant, but the official name for it is a Monstera adan, adansoni, adansoni. I can never pronounce it, but either way, it's a really beautiful little plant. I'm actually probably the most excited for this because it really does just keep gifting me brand new leaves. And the leaves kind of look a little bit silky as well, which is pretty cool. So this particular plant is also native in jungles in Central and South America, but it's absolutely stunning. Same reason for the holes in the leaves to allow light to the rest of them, but oh, it's just gorgeous. So if you don't have space, for a true monstera, you might have space for one of these. Though I have seen these grow pretty big up moss poles. I've seen them get really tall. So yeah, I'd love advice on how to make these tall. Last but certainly not least, I have three cactuses or cacti. I believe these are all from Ikea a very long time ago. They've just kind of just been loving their life on my windowsill in my kitchen. This one's probably the least healthiest, which I think is gonna 
die over the next year, but we'll see. But these two are really happy. And these pots my mum bought me for my birthday a couple of years ago, and they're absolutely beautiful. And the, actually, no, I've lied to you. These aren't the last plants in my house. I do have an orchid that lives in my bathroom. It's currently not in flower, so it's just two kind of floppy leaves. So I won't go and get it, but I love orchids. I once gifted someone an orchid and because they didn't know how to look after them or didn't know what an orchid was rather, when it stopped flowering, they binned it and it's, oh, it broke my heart because they will reflower year after year after year if you really look after them. But yes, they're absolutely stunning when they flower. It's one of my mum's favorite plants as well. And they love, love, love humidity which is why it lives in my bathroom. But yes, yeah, so there you have it, my plant addiction. I thought it was about time that I shared them all with you properly and gave you a few updates on them. But as I said, it's my favorite time of year at the moment. It's spring, I have given them some plant food and fertilizer, so a lot of them are very happy and are giving me new growth and new leaves, which makes me feel like I'm being the best plant parent that there is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Watching. One thing I will ask is if any of you have any rare plants which you think that I would enjoy that are also easy to care for, leave a comment down below. Let me know. And are you into plants? If so, what plants do you have? Let's have a conversation because I just love talking to you guys. But yes, if you enjoyed this video, give it a magical thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Okay, guys. Bye. I don't know why plants give me this much happiness.